OK, uh, good morning and welcome to this licensing gambling subcommittee being held on Tuesday, the 22nd of June 2021. This meeting has been held remotely via Microsoft Teams due to restrictions in relation to COVID-19. My name is Councillor Walter Williams and I will be chairing this licensing meeting today. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available to, to view via the Council's website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images and audio of those individuals present and or speaking will be publicly available to all by the recording on the Council website at www.cafili.com gov.uk. I will now carry out the roll call for attendance. Please can you announce yourself as present when I call out your name? Members first. A councillor Donna Cushing. Present Chair. And councillor Phil Bevan. Yes, here, yes, Chair. Thank you. Can I check the following officers present? Uh, Lee Morgan, Licensing Manager. Yeah, present Chair, good morning. Good morning. Kath Hopkins, Senior Licensing Officer. Yeah, morning Chair, I'm morning. here. Todd Rawson, Solicitor. Uh, present Chair. Okay. Rebecca Barrett, Committee Services Officer. Morning Chair, present. Thank you. Uh, look, please can I check the applicants is present, Mr. David Willing. Sorry, Mr. Willing, I think you're on mute. I beg your pardon. Yes, I'm present, Chairman. Thanks very much. I also have a list of responsible authorities and other personal persons and local residents speaking at the meeting. Please you know, announce yourself as present when I call out your name. Uh, PC Dan Allen. Present, Chair. Uh, Annette Dix, Licensing Authority. Present Chair. Abby Brown, Environmental Health. Present Chair. Thank you. Mrs Coughlin. Present Chair. And Miss, Mrs Lane. Present Chair. Mr Leonard. Present. And Mrs Waite, Residence. Uh, present Chair. Thank you. Can I also welcome supporting officers from committee services who are present and in the background. Thank you all for confirming your attendance. Please can I remind attendees that if you lose connection during the meeting, please make every attempt to reconnect. Committee services are on hand and will be able to assist you to reconnect if necessary. Please can I ask everyone to keep the microphones on mute until they are invited to speak. I should also remind everyone that the chair has a discretion to remove persons from the remote meeting if that is necessary. If you wish to speak, please use the hands up function in Microsoft Teams. We now move to the agenda. First on the agenda is apologies for absence. Do we have any? None, Chair. Thank you very much. Two is declarations of interest. Chair, Lee uh, Morgan, sorry. Up. Yeah, so, sorry, Chair. Uh, it's just in, in relation to apologies, uh, Deborah Lewis, the Child Protection Officer, has uh, given her apologies uh, yeah. um, in relation to not being able to attend the meeting this morning. She has a, another meeting. So I'd uh, just like that to be recorded, if I may. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Morgan. Uh, item two is, uh, number two is direct declarations of interest. Councillors and officers are reminded of the personal responsibility to declare any personal or prejudicial interest in respect of any item of business on this agenda in accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councils and officers. 
please use the hands up function to indicate if you have any such declarations. No, no declaration, thank you. Now we'll go to item three, please. Determination of club premises certificate variation application. Ponty Mr. Welfare Bowls Club, TSA Pavilion, Ponty Mr. Riska. Mr. Rawson from Legal, can I hand over to you, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, before members consider the matter before them, I'll firstly to run through the procedure that we followed at this meeting. The procedure will be followed uh, for today is firstly that the licensing manager will present his report to the subcommittee. All parties will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the licensing manager uh, regarding the information uh, contained in the report. The applicant will then be asked to address the subcommittee in support of the application that's been made. All parties will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant uh, and any representatives uh, that they have. Each responsibility, sorry, each responsible authority in turn will then be asked to address the subcommittee in support of their representations that have been made. All parties will then have the opportunity to ask questions of each responsible authority in turn. The local residents uh, will then be asked to address the subcommittee in support of their representations. All parties will then have the opportunity to ask questions of the local residents. All parties will then have the opportunity to sum up. Uh, please note uh, that this uh, should be a summary of, of any information that's already been given to the subcommittee. Uh, and is not an opportunity to introduce uh, fresh or new evidence at that point in time or, or new or fresh uh, information or representations. Please can I ask that if you do not uh, clearly hear a question or response that you ask the person speaking if they can repeat what they've said. If you lose con uh, connection, uh, we will pause proceedings. Uh, so please make every effort to reconnect uh, in the meantime. If you have any difficulties reconnecting, uh, then please telephone committee services on a 07768 095152. And I'll give you that number again. It's 07768 095152. And there should be some assistance in the background to help you reconnect as quickly as possible. Uh, once all parties have summed up, the chair will then ask all the parties to leave the meeting through the uh, hang up or leave button on Teams on the interface. And the decision of the subcommittee uh, will be made and then it'll be circulated uh, in uh, writing by the licensing department within uh, five working days of the meeting. Uh, that is the procedure for the meeting. If anyone has any questions on the meeting procedures, if you can just let, let me know by uh, using the hands up uh, function and we'll go through uh, any questions that you may have. Um, Chair, I can't see any hands up, so I'm going to pass back to you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Rawson. Uh, first of all, can I just point out that Mr. Lane is also present as a resident. He's also in the screen next to Mr. Coughlin. Thank you very much. Uh, now call on uh, Mr. Lee Morgan, please. Lace is in. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, good morning. Can I welcome all parties uh, to this uh, licensing subcommittee meeting this morning? Um, it, it, just to run through uh, the application for everyone's benefit, the members, the application then for your consideration and determination is for the variation of a club premises certificate under the Licensing Act 2003. Uh, and this relates to the Pontemister Welfare Bowls Club at TSAF Pavilion in Pontemister. Uh, within the report, uh, paragraph uh, 1.3 sets out the nature of the application submitted by the applicant. And these are to remove um, some embedded conditions currently on the existing club premises certificate, to add on and off sales uh, provision to incorporate the bowling green area um, that uh, surrounds the premises, to extend alcohol hours and for um, what was being applied for is provision of live and recorded music. The steps volunteered by the applicant um, as part of the application, they appear in your bundle at paragraph 1.31. The conditions to be removed uh, at paragraph 1.32 and the current permissions that uh, the premises currently has then is set out at 1.33. 
The paragraph at 1.34, um, if the application was approved, um, this sort of details what the certificate and permissions would look at, would look like uh, should members determine to, to grant this application after the, the meeting today. To provide uh, members and um, all parties with um, some information as to this uh, application and just generally so that everyone knows that we have um, the existing uh, club footprint uh, in effect um, is only contained to the pavilion of the building and uh, this is detailed at uh, appendix one uh, on page nine and um, the, as I said, this relates to the building only, not the bowling green currently. If members were to approve the variation application, then a uh, supply of alcohol would be permitted within the, within the confines of the bowling green area itself. Uh, and then I suppose, uh, again, Appendix 3 on page 13 shows the sort of uh, the area that, which would then be covered by the um, the permissions of this, the club premises certificate. Now, this application, like all others, is subject to a 28 day consultation period. Um, during this time, representations have been received from responsible authorities and also then um, from uh, local residents um, who have objected to the application. The the representations that have been received from the responsible authorities, they are contained at uh, paragraph 1.51 and then 1.52. 1 uh, this details uh, objections received from uh, residents and members, you will hear from both the responsible authorities who will confirm their position to you. Uh, aside from the child protection officer who has offered her apologies today, her comments can, see, can be seen within the, the bundle. Um, the residents um, will also have uh, the ability to uh, make their uh, representations to you uh, after the applicant has, has, has made his application to you this morning. A summary of the comments received as part of the consultation process is contained at uh, paragraph 1.6 of the report. The response made by the applicant then uh, to the um, primarily the, the concerns of local residents is contained at paragraph 1.7 and uh, in full at appendix 14 at uh, page 47 of, your, of, of the report today. In essence, the responsible authorities have sought to impose conditions to restrict activities in respect of permitted times and restricting the use of the outside area to 2200 and uh, restricting the provision of music entertainment on New Year's Eve till half past midnight. Chair, at, at this point, I would just like to check with you that you and fellow members have had um, some had sight of further representations yesterday um, submitted by Mr Leonard. Uh, and that consisted of an email and two photographs. So, Chair, if I could ask you to, to, to nod or to, um, to confirm whether you've had sight of that for me, that would be appreciated. Yes, I have, yes. Okay, thank you. The, the licensing assessment and how you will approach the determination of this application is, is detailed for, for everyone at paragraph 1.8, and you will consider this morning the licensing uh, objectives the Licensing Act itself, the statutory guidance and the Council's own licensing policy and uh, all then the matters that you hear as evidence as part of this morning's meeting. Paragraph 1.9 of the report details some observations in respect of the, the application and comments that's been received to date from the responsible authorities and local residents, um, which includes the advertising of the application. Uh, Chair, I, I know that this has been a, a, a source of some frustration for the residents and in relation to the uh, advertising of the application. Um, as is detailed in the report, there are uh, requirements as to how an application should be advertised and um, I am satisfied that those provisions have been complied with as part of this application. Uh, members, as 
as a norm with a report of this nature, there is a recommendation set out in the report, and that is detailed at paragraph 1.10. Uh, this, in effect, recommends um, at this point that the variation is approved in line with the conditions set out at Appendix 15 of the report, and they are con those comments are contained within 49, pages 49 to 50. However, this is just a recommendation based on the information received thus far, um, and you are required to come to your own uh, decision and determination after hearing from all parties at this meeting today. Uh, which includes the applicant, uh, the RAs and uh, the residents. Chair, uh, at this point I'll hand back to you. So um, there may be some questions for me at this point. Uh, if not, then obviously this will allow you to hand over to the, the applicant and he can make his application to members this morning. OK, thank you, Chair. Thanks. Thank you, Mr Morgan. Uh, I'd like to ask now, are there any questions for licensing, please? Uh, first is Councillor Cushing. Mr. Morgan. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Can I just clarify with Mr. Morgan? Uh, from reading the your report, um, the only sort of uh, changes I can see because there were um, the times uh, that it's currently the license currently stands is going to be similar to how it's um, what they'd actually apply in for, apart from the music and outdoor um, drinking license. Is that correct, Mr Morgan? OK, um, the, the, you're right. There is an existing uh, club premises certificate, uh, which um, I think is, is best demonstrated. The current permissions um, which they are bound by are at paragraph 1.33. And so they are the existing uh, provisions that the club has uh, under its current certificate. Um, at the moment, the club is limited, the footprint as it stands now of the club and where it can uh, supply alcohol is restricted to the pavilion building only yeah. and nowhere else. Um, the application obviously seeks to uh, change that and to then incorporate the confines of the bowling green. Um, so it effectively increasing the, the area where alcohol can be supplied to um, members of this club. Um, so the existing provisions would permit uh, alcohol to be so to be supplied to members up until 2300. Obviously, the variation seeks to extend that um, somewhat till 2330 uh, with an additional provision then on New Year's Eve on for, for that occasion to go till uh, 2 a.m. Uh, uh, in relation to entertainment, I, I'll, I'll cover that point as well if I may, because it might help um, for members going forward. With the uh, where the premises is licensed for the sale or supply of alcohol, there is a automatic provision which permits via exemptions um, uh, entertainment to be held between 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. So the club had initially asked to, for additional uh, time for entertainment, but uh, they have brought that back. They have said they no longer want to pursue that avenue to increase the entertainment provision, and they are content with um, entertainment and, and under the live and music and, and uh, the deregulation that is afforded, apart from on uh, New Year's Eve, which obviously they want until uh, half past midnight. I know I've waffled a bit there, but hopefully that might have covered off some of the things, some of the questions and queries you may have about the existing provisions and permissions. OK, thanks, Mr Morgan. Uh, next person will end up is Mrs Coughlin, please. Yeah, um, this is uh, addressed to Lee, please. And Lee, you know my um, my conversation with you about um, having being communicated and I do accept what you said. However, I am just wondering on Appendix 5, 1.1, 1 .1, where it says encouraging greater community involvement in licensing decisions and giving local residents the opportunity to have their say regarding licensing decisions that might affect them, how that has been taken into account with your recommendation. 
And I say this um, as a resident, um, I, I hadn't seen um, the notices on the board whilst I have dogs going up to the doors um, isn't one of my of the bowling club isn't something I do and it's a park that frequently has uh, broken bottles so it's not a place I take my dogs to very often um, whilst um, I, I don't take the local Argus um, my neighbour Mrs Lane does and there are occasions I do actually um, look at the Kefili website and I've made several kinds of contributions in terms of compliments. I've made it, done a recent survey. So whilst I do take opportunities to look at um, some of the, uh, the modes of communicating on this, I'm, I'm not likely to pick everything up at all times. So I think my question is in relation to what I've said, 1.5 and encouraging greater opportunity for for us given the proximity um you know where where that appears in um, your report sorry so 1.5 so you were referring to this in the in the actual bundles this morning um this yeah, is it's appendix, appendix five it's extract five, from the national yeah uh, extract from the national um guidance issued under section 182 of the licensing act 1.5 and it's the last bullet point on page 19. Yes, the, 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 this, the, the legislation does allow um, for your involvement. Um, it's again under the Act. Um, it sets out quite clearly how um, an application is to be advertised um, and the requirements by, of the applicant and the uh, the licensing authority. Uh, you, you have the ability to uh, take part in licensing decisions because you're at the hearing today. Um, you know, this, this is an opportunity uh, for your input uh, in addition to the representations you've made um, about this application, you have the ability to attend to attend the hearing and to um, to inform members as to your concerns about uh, the application should it be granted in in the manner that has been applied for. So you do have um, the ability to influence uh, local decisions um, and to have an involvement. Unfortunately, I can't. There the are the minimum requirements that uh, are set out in. In the Act, uh, those matters have been complied with in, in relation to the advertising of the, the application. Um, so, unfortunately, th th those matters have been met, I'm afraid, uh, Mrs. Coughlin. Th thank you for that. Um, I guess for me, I, I understand what you're saying, but when you've got some additional guidance, you do have it for me um, as a resident. Um, it, it, there's a little bit of a disconnect there. Thank you anyway for your response. Okay. Are you uh, on the next, please, is Todd Rawson. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Morgan, to the best of your knowledge, can you lawfully require uh, an applicant to go beyond the notice requirements as set out in the legislation regulations? Can you, in effect, hold them to a higher requirement? I can't. Um, it would be nice to, uh, because I think that may uh, address some of the concerns um, of residents, not, not just in this case, but in any case. You know, anything that would be done would be of the applicant's own sort of volition, really, or if there were, was a directive more generally by the council that the that licensing applications would be approached in, in, a, in, a, in a way in addition to the minimum requirements. That, that certainly isn't the case. Um, you know, it's so. So the answer to your question, no, there's there's nothing I can I could do to to do that. I'm afraid. Uh, thank you, Mr. Morgan. Thank, thank you, you. Uh, Councillor Bevan, please. Yes, in relation to notification, it's okay if you know that something is happening, then you can make the objections. But if, as the lady said, she hasn't seen anything or is not uh, in in the right place at the right time to to witness anything, it's very difficult. With planning, of course, the uh, any planning application comes in. Of course, the local residents have to be notified of any planning application. And I just find it strange that the same things don't apply 
uh, to licensing. Is it something that we could do as a local authority anyhow, over and above the requirements of the Act? Um, th th I think that would be a matter for uh, the, the full um, licensing and gambling committee. Uh, if you wanted, if there were to be um, a provision that members wanted to um, require the licensing department to do on receipt of an application in addition uh, to um, the statutory requirements, that is something that um, members could consider. You, you will obviously, members, you, you will know being ward members yourself that all applications are communicated to you as part of your role as elected members for the area. And I know that you will have, uh, well, I, I suspect most of you will have uh, local meetings for your wards. And th there are opportunities for, for the matters to be, um, uh, information to be forwarded, you know, via uh, the, the elected members for the area. Um, I, I'm not sure whether that, that happens currently, you know, within your communities, but there are, you know, but th these applications are communicated um, every week to to elected members so that they're aware of what is happening within their area. So um, in relation to planning and licensing, the two matters are distinct, um, separate legal for both. Um, you know, in this instance, um, members, if it was a planning application, yes, they would have had a, a letter to their door or perhaps more uh, advertisements on um, posts, etc. I'm not quite sure what the complete requirements are for a planning application, but there may be additional things which um, uh, local residents may have seen. But unfortunately, those provisions are not detailed within the Licensing Act. OK, Chair, if I could come back on that, then it is something we, I think, should look at at full licensing. Too late for this application, of course. But I think uh, as local members, sometimes we can miss things as well, even though we're notified uh, because of the number of emails and stuff that we get. So I think uh, as a fail safe, we should look at it at least. So I'm okay. sorry about that, Lee, but uh, it might be no work for you. But perhaps okay, it means, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bevan. taking on more staff for you, you see. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Councillor Bevan. And uh, we may look at that in the next meeting. Uh, Councillor Cushion, have you got your hand up, please? Or have you stood up from the last time? No, I've got my hand up. It's regarding um, what's been discussed now in the last couple of minutes, uh, Chair. Um, yeah, what I'm actually uh, going to ask is clarification from Lee. When um, a uh, licensing, because I know when I've had the emails regarding licensing and planning applications and different things, if there's anything that's, like you said, uh, come to me that's concerning my area and my community, um, I actually, you know, send information out to the local residents. But in this particular instance, where was the advertising regarding the change uh, or the proposed licensing request? Where was it advertised? Okay, the requirement would be to advertise um, the a notice to be placed on the premises, um, then um, a notice to be placed uh, in the in a newspaper for local to the area. Um, so and then finally, uh, the requirement for the local authority to advertise the application on its website uh, for the period of twenty eight days. So those are the, the, the three areas that uh, would effectively have to be covered. Uh, as I said earlier, you know, I'm satisfied um, that those, me those measures have been met, you know, as part of this application. And, you know, th they are the requirements and, you know, we can't ask the applicant to, to, to effectively do more than that. Yeah. But, um, you know. But um, basically, unlike planning, where you see the notices on lampposts and different things like that, the only place in that particular area where the notice was put up was actually on the the build on the building that uh, was requesting the change in the licensing. Then is it? Am I correct? That, that, that would be the requirement. Uh, if the applicant the applicant may have uh, placed the advertisement in other places. Uh, but you know that would be the main requirement uh, that he would 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 have met, and uh, yes, yeah, so effectively on the building um, or access to, to where, the, where the building is accessed, uh, and as I said, the the newspaper advertisement, which is you know a one a, a one opportunity, which is advertised in, in the local press, which is re what's required, 
And apart from that, yeah, it is just the, the authority's website for the period of 28 days. So that is it, unfortunately. OK, thanks very much for that then, Lee. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rawson, did you want to speak? Uh, thanks, Chair. Mr. Morgan, it, it may be helpful um, for everyone in attendance just to perhaps briefly explain the practical difference between having the Bowling Green incorporated into the uh, license premises as to how it currently stands um, without a variation. Um, for I understand it, the consumption of alcohol isn't a licensable activity. So if the if the if a a person at the club at the moment purchased their alcohol inside the the premised area at the bar, and then took their pint out onto the bowling green to consume, would that be a breach on the current licensing conditions? Yeah, yes. The only thing at the moment, the consumption should take place within the, the confines area, the supply area. Yeah. So by widening the green, you will widen the area for which the consumption of alcohol can happen on the on the wider premises. Yes. Thank you. OK, thanks very much. Uh, we now move to the representation from the applicant, Mr. Willing. Can I ask you to address the subcommittee in support of the application, please? Yes, um, thank you, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, first of all, the, there's already been some time spent on the um, advertising of the variation. And if I could uh, just mention, Mr. Morgan said that the need was only um, to put a, a notice on the uh, building itself. Uh, that, in fact, wasn't done. It was put on the external sides of the gates in strict accordance with the requirements. Um, it, the notices had to be up within uh, one day of the application being made to the license department. That was complied with. Uh, photographs were sent to um, uh, Ms. Hopkins, Catherine Hopkins, uh, dated obviously. Uh, the notices themselves, there's a requirement that they have to be on a blue paper, which they were. Uh, there's a very big font used so that they are very readable. Um, it's a 16 size font uh, and they were kept up um, for about two weeks beyond. In fact, I only took them down last Wednesday. Um, so the, it was two weeks beyond the 28th of May when I could have taken them down. Um, they were, there's a lot of people use the lane going past the bottom main access gate and the notices were very visible on the gate there. Uh, and on the park side, again, they were on the outside of the gate and very visible to anybody um, going somewhere near the entrance to the bowling green. Um, and of course, they were then advertised within the 10 working days in, in the press. So we complied with all that. Um, turn into the reason for the application. Um, and could I say that um, I, I thank the uh, advice and assistance given initially by Mr. Lee Morgans, Morgan and subsequently by uh, Catherine Hopkins. Um, I think the observations given by Mr. Morgan in his um, in his report to you on one nine, first paragraph sums it up. The fact is that uh, we, as a bowling club, as all bowling clubs, and I've been to bowling clubs throughout the country, they serve uh, our bowl, uh, at their bar, and bowlers then will invariably, during the match, take their glass out onto the side of the bowling green, you can't actually drink on the green itself. They'll take it out to the side of the bowling green and in between ends uh, that they bowl, um, they'll step off the bowling green, have a sip of their beer outside uh, of whatever they may drink in um, or, or even a tango or a Pepsi and, and step back on to play the next end. 
We have, as all bowling clubs, we have allowed this to happen, not realizing and unintentionally in, in breach, it appears now, uh, in breach of the original licensing condition. And as Mr. Morgan points out in the first paragraph of 1.9, what we are trying to do here is to rectify what has been going on for a considerable number of years. And it's just not that it's not just at our club. This is all over. And I know the licensing department for a fact are dealing with a number of applications um, for the same reason as uh, we wish to deal with the application, uh, wish to vary the license, because this practice has unintentionally and knowingly been going on. And it only came to light as a result of um, club, clubs with club premises certificates being asked to contact the licensing department at the time that the government, the Welsh government, allowed outside uh, alcohol to be consumed. I believe it was something like the 13th of May, was it? Something like that. And of course, three weeks later, they allowed inside anyway. But so that started the ball rolling. And I was advised at the time by Mr. Morgan that if uh, to rectify the situation that had been going on for many, many years, um, that I should apply for a variation of the license, which is what I then proceeded to, to, to do. In making the application, it was suggested to me that if on occasions we had um, uh, functions going on, which uh, included the provision of live music, that I should also include that as part of the variation. What has to be remembered that when making the application and to include such a provision, one has to apply for every day of the week, of every week of the year. When in fact, as a bowling club, we only wanted it for the possibility, and I emphasize possibility, the possibility of someone in our club wishing to celebrate some sort of function or the club themselves wishing to have live music on, for example, uh, presentation night. In the past, that has happened and it's happened Possibly, and again, I emphasize possibly, um, two, maybe three times a year. Unfortunately, when making the application, you, an applicant, cannot specify that he only wants it for two or three times a year for special functions. As I've already said, you have to indicate that it's every day of the week. 52 weeks of the year, which is unfortunate because I think that straight away has given the residents the idea of us opening, if I may say, uh, opening some sort of nightclub uh, and attracting hordes of, uh, of younger people. That is far, far from the truth. I did prepare a statement, which I know um, Catherine sent out to the residents, and every word that I put in that statement is the honest truth. We did only want um, this uh, condition for, uh, that allowed uh, music on possibly two or three times a year. And I gave examples of that. In fact, the last uh, time that we had uh, live music there was in January 2020, prior to the, uh, to the country learning about the pandemic and lockdown and so on. 
and it happened to be our club secretary celebrating his 80th uh, birthday. When there was probably 55, 60, he invited his family, of course, were there, and he invited members of the club. I myself, uh, 77 next week, in three years' time, if I'm still around, may want to celebrate my 80th birthday at the club. The year after, I celebrate my 60th wedding anniversary. I may want to uh, celebrate that at the club. Unlikely, because I tend to, these days, celebrate such things with my family, grandchildren and great-grandchildren. But that was the type of um, function when live music um, would have been played. One of the um, residents object, uh, one of the objectors referred to the fact, um, when is this going to happen? Are we going to have it two or three times a week? This is where I believe by applying for that part of the variation um, as, as, as created this sense that we are going to suddenly change. That cannot be farther from the truth. The club will continue to operate exactly as it has done. I've been a member there since I retired as a chief officer of Visiting Council in 96. I've been, so that I joined in the following year in 97, that's 24 years. The club have had a license for something like 30 years or maybe be longer. Um, we are not going to change. Nothing will change from the way the club is operated at the moment. Um, the responsible authorities have, uh, have visited the club. Um, you've got their uh, details uh, before you in the package. Um, they uh, have recommended that uh, the Variation to allow music until half past 11 uh, should not be allowed and should be cease at uh, 11 o'clock. Any uh, drinking outside of the pavilion itself should be limited to 10 o'clock. I have, on behalf of the club, as the applicant, on behalf of the club, agreed to those conditions. And had I realised at the time of making the application that that part of the application would have caused so much problem, I would I, I would never have included it in the first place because as the officer's report has pointed out, under the club premises that they get, we are allowed to have recorded and live music until 11 o'clock anyway. Um, and I cannot, I may be rambling and repeating myself, but we're only talking about the possibility of that happening on perhaps two or three occasions. Um, as far as the drinking outside is concerned, members generally would only take uh, uh, the, their glass of uh, whatever out onto the side of the bowling green during the match itself. Now on a Saturday afternoon, Games, uh, the match finishes around about half past five. Uh, on a Wednesday evening uh, is league games. They finish around about half past eight, quarter to nine. Everybody then tends to come into the pavilion. My wife, who happens to do the catering there, normally provides food after all matches. So they come into the pavilion, they love their sandwich or their their role or whatever uh, she happens to be providing on that particular day. Um, and, and that's where they stay. On a hot summer's day, gets warm in the pavilion, you may get the uh, odd one, the food people that will take their glass out, back outside. But in front of our pavilion, for the whole length of the pavilion, there's a canopy and under that canopy, there must be at least seven or eight wooden benches that have been dedicated by families of past members who have sadly passed away. And they will sit on those benches facing the bowling green. 
with their backs to the pavilion and of course the the the, the properties of, um, of of the objectors are then to the rear of that area itself as far as inside um, and the noise created in any noise that may be created inside the pavilion on these very few occasions when there could be live music there are no windows um, that face the houses all the windows internally are covered with honor boards um, so there's there's no glass uh, um, directly allowing noise to permit to the rear of the pavilion. Um, recently, uh, because of problems with the roof of the pavilion, the council at the, uh, in about March of this year um, re-roofed the pavilion and I'm told, I didn't see it, the work going on, but I'm told there's something like a four inch uh, insulation slabs put on top of the existing roof and then it was refelded. That again will act as a sound barrier for noise that may travel upwards uh, through the roof. Um, but we are, and I emphasize, I keep on emphasizing, we are only talking about the possibility of this happening on two or three occasions a year. Um, I, I don't think I can add much more to that. We've agreed with the responsible authorities' conditions. Um, I think that's about all I can say, Chairman. Um, I, as I've said, everything in the statement that was passed to the uh, residents is the honest truth. We don't intend to alter anything that uh, hasn't gone on in at the Bowling Green for a good number of years. It was nice to see one remark, it was a postscript on one of the um, objectors' letters that said, we were respecting uh, um, Bowling Green, a, a respected facility in the community for the older generation. It was nice to hear that. And it, the postscript went on to say, um, keep it as a bowling green. Our full intention is in fact to keep it as a bowling green. One last point, Mr. Chairman. We have one, one solitary member under 60 years of age. The, norm, uh, the average age of membership is over 70. As I said, I'll, I'll be 77 myself in a week's time. We don't seem to be able to attract a younger person and bowl, and this is a problem for all bowling clubs and bowling clubs. Membership is declining throughout the country, not just in Wales, in Caerphilly, but throughout the country. It would be, I, I would love to see some of these objectors. I, I noticed the, the age of Mr. Leonard, he's the ideal age to come and join our club and start bowling. Because the way I see it, in 10 years time, these residents are not gonna have a bowling club there anyway. Because, you know, the, the age, we're just all getting older. I think with that, Mr. Chairman, and I'll, I'll stop. Thank you, Mr. Willing. Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Willing, please? I see uh, Councillor Cushion, I think, was the first with hand up. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, just a clarification, that is, Mr. Willing. So basically, nothing is going to change in regards to what you currently provide anyway, only the fact that you're going to have the correct licenses. Is that right? Because obviously you haven't had the, the correct license previously to provide um, alcohol in and around the bowling green, and you've inadvertently been providing this, but um, as far as you're concerned, nothing is going to change. Is that right? Uh, yes, Councillor Cushing, that is exactly right. Um, 
uh, your officers will be able to tell you that um, we aren't alone in this. This all came to light as a result of the government allowing outside the outside consumption of alcohol. I know for a fact that your department, the licensing department that is, is currently dealing. I know of two clubs that are, uh, are currently going through the same process. I, I was talking to the secretary of, of one of them uh, not uh, uh, two weeks ago, and another one that I'm aware of, a prominent member there happened to tell me that they are having the same problem. And in fact, in that case, I actually sent him a copy of my application to help him <laughs> fill in his application to the authority. So, and, and uh, I, I know in, in uh, chats that I've had with Catherine, that Catherine has mentioned that um, uh, we aren't alone in this. Uh, there's a lot of clubs in exactly the same position, and it only came to light, as it said, as Mr. Morgan said in his observation on one nine, um, it only came to light as a result of the Welsh Government allowing the outside consumption of alcohol. Councillor Cushin, OK? Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you, uh, Chair. Thank you. Um, the next, I think, is uh, residence, please, uh, Mrs. Coughlin or Vivian Coughlin. OK, uh, Richard, do you want to ask a question? Yeah, yeah, I'll go first. Mr. Leonard's going to ask a question first. Mr. Uh, Leonard, OK. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Willin, can you hear me? I don't know if you can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to say that uh, two former members of your group, uh, Civil and Patricia Bainton, um, do, you, do you know them? Sir Bainton, yes, I know Sir. Yeah. Well, that's my father-in-law. Oh, Myself right. and my wife have both been in the, in the Bowls Club and we have both had a pint around the green. No problems whatsoever. We've been to one of your trophy ceremonies where Patricia Bainton would often win. OK, we've got no problem with that. You have just turned around and said you've been breaking your license restrictions all these years. But now you've said obviously you didn't understand them, but you said you're going to carry on regardless. to to whatever happens, so you're going to continue breaking and not understanding your license. Mm -hmm. You know, or, that you you've admitted it to what you've admitted it you said you were going to carry on regardless you know me as a resident yes i'm concerned obviously my main factor is the loud music and the loud noise you say you want it 352 week days a year sorry, sorry to interrupt mr landon is the question to mr willing yes is, it is. The, is is the club intending to carry on as before if the variation is denied by the committee is that the question yes thank you Thank you, Mr. Willing. You wish me to reply to that? Uh, yes, please. It's a question. Yes, please. Yeah. The, the, the old purpose of the variation is to rectify what we've been doing wrong. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Leonard, you just pointed out yourself that you've been there another point at the club. Yes, I have. Yeah, I, a long time ago. Outside when uh, your mother, mother in law, yeah, mother and father-in-law were both members of the yacht. In law used to be members of the club. So you you, you are aware of, of what goes on in the club. Yeah, everyone was playing bowls, nothing else. That doesn't cause a problem to anybody. What the uh, the granting of the application will rectify that situation and and, and will allow it. Um Hello. What what you yourself, Mr. Leonard, have, have, have done in the past, and um, we want to we want to be running the club in accordance with the conditions of the license. And unfortunately, and we're not the only ones. Unfortunately, it appears that we haven't been doing that correctly in the past. So that, that don't give me much enthusiasm. If you can't follow that license, why would you follow the new license? Why would you abide by that? You, how would I know you can't understand that? But, well, the, the new license would allow what you yourself have done and had a drink outside of the... I only done it with the permission of the owners of the club. I, I would never know what was in place, so you don't put that back on me, sorry. 
Sorry, let's Sorry. stick to questions that are relevant to the application, if that's okay. I think we're straying a little bit here yeah. um, off track, if I can say. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gawson. Uh, yep. Could I ask uh, Councillor Bevan, I think he wanted to ask a question. No. No. Uh, it's just a question that I would regard to understanding where the residents come from, the objectors. And it looks as if it's from the um, east of the site to the southeast corner. Um, because it's, it involves about 11, 11 houses. Um, and I, I assume they've been through the years. If Mr. Willing has, has said that drinking outside has been going on all that time. Has anybody objected to that drinking? Um, Lee would have to reply to that one. Uh, and the other one was uh, in regard to um, taking alcohol outside is, is forbidden at the moment, uh, but it wouldn't stop soft drinks going out there, would it? Jay, perhaps I can yes, come in. Please, uh, Mr. Morgan. Yeah, that might be helpful. Um, obviously, this, this sales supply of, of soft drinks, it, it wouldn't be a, a licensable activity as such. It's the supply of alcohol, which, which, which obviously would be um, the, the, this committee uh, will be able to influence. Um, in relation to um, complaints, um, Councillor Bevan, in relation to uh, alcohol, provision. I'm not aware that the licensing authority has been contacted about uh, the sale of alcohol uh, mm. and usage of the Bowling Green area um, previously. Uh, that's not something I, that I have seen uh, in terms of records which are, which are held. Um, coming back to uh, another point, um, the, uh, in relation to um, not complying with provisions, whatever the provision, um, where the licensing department is aware that there is uh, an issue in respect of compliance with the license, um, it will in the first instance engage, advise, um, but obviously if there is any um, allegations then, uh, you know, once that's been brought to the, um, the attention of the licensed premises concerned of any uh, deviance from the license or what the license permits, then obviously we would address that appropriately. Uh, and that, you know, could be, you know, with a range of uh, of, of sanctions, uh, should should that be the case. So um, I would just put that out there at, at this point. Um, so that may assist um, in, in some of those questions or some of the comments that's, that's just been made. OK, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Uh Mr. Willing, have you got anything to add to that? I don't think so, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay, thanks very much. Uh, Mr. Rawson, are you got your hand up? Thanks, Chair. Um, Mr. Willing, I just a couple of questions in relation to um, the membership and activities of the uh, club. What's your current membership numbers, roughly? Um, bowling members is approximately 30, 34 actual bowlers and we've got some uh, social uh, members who were bowlers but because of age or um, uh, illnesses of some sort they are still social members they still visit the club but no longer bowl that would take us up to around the 40 uh, we also have a ladies' club um, using the green. Uh, they go under the name of Isluin Ladies. Um, my wife is uh, a member of that club. Um, they have, I believe they have something like 16 lady bowlers. So is that a, around about 56 members all up? Yes, in uh, around that. In round terms, yeah. the you may have covered it off in um, some of the evidence in the in the pack. But when does the bowling season run from? When would you? What months of the year are you using the outdoor green? The uh, that's um, 
pointed out in my statement, the bowling season starts mid-April, it finishes mid-September. Um, as my statement also points out, we do um, try to keep the club open for members during the close season, which is mid-September to mid-April. Um, it's very limited numbers, so yeah. um, if, if we get 20 to 24 members there, that's a good night. Normally it's between 12 and 15 members. They go along, meet one another, have a chat. Yeah. Um, it may be helpful for um, those in the meeting who aren't bowlers. Just have a rough idea on a league game on a Wednesday or a game on, on Saturday. Uh, when you take into account the, the team that is bowling for the home side and the team that is visiting, how many people all up are we looking at using the green at any one time during a match? Uh, a match is normally four rinks, four rinks of four. So you've got 16 opponents, 16 home players. Um, there may be, uh, the opponents may have a, uh, a couple of people with them supporting them. Uh, we as a home team may have a couple of people there supporting them. But yeah. back on the green, you'll have 32 players maximum. Um, we have had uh, six rink games there, and obviously then it's six fours, uh, 24 uh, on each side, that's 48 players. But that rarely happens. In 2019, there were quite a number of occasions when that did happen, because I um, had the honour of being the Monmouthshire Bowling Association president in 2019. And the president of the county um, always has invitation games there. For example, I had the Welsh president. The Welsh president was from Montgomery. So I had bowlers from all over Wales there that day. Six rinks of four. The Monmouthshire finals were there. This is uh, something that the county president has. But we're talking about the norm, Mr. Rawson. Um, the norm for normal league match is a maximum of six, uh, 32 players on the green. Thank you, Mr. Welling. Chair, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rawson. I'll go back to the residents, please. And, uh, can you, you, any, you got your hand up. Any more questions? Yeah, so, sorry, I have to uh, charge my uh, laptop up. Um, yeah, Mr. Willings, thank you for that um, outlining some of the, you've put some things into perspective, which is really helpful. Um, just a few points, if you don't mind. Um, on In respect of the notice on the, on the gate, um, it was two A4 pieces of paper landscape. Um, certainly the entrance at the back of our houses dead end. Is, is a dead end. It's not an area I would go up. And on the few occasions I've been through the park from the end where you would come into your club with the with the small gate, the notice was not on the small gate. It was just by chance. Um, I noticed it. Um, the other day, and it was on your larger gate, which is is actually um, not particularly visible unless you turned your head. So, in in terms of the advertising, with respect, I found that quite I found that quite difficult. There was a question. I was just wondering why the variation to eleven thirty. I have no objections to you um, to members drinking outside on on the green, um, even if it was until eleven o'clock. I wouldn't have had objections, and I thank the police for bringing it to to ten thirty. My one of my questions will be is about parking and what is permitted. Oh, and I think one of my concerns about a half past 11 finish is your gate is a seems like a heavy metal gate mm -hmm. uh, pre COVID um, when there were I, I heard the gate late at night um, closing um, and then there were cars parked outside the back of my house and certainly part of Mr. Leonard's 
and Mrs Lane's, but most of the, I would have taken the, the majority of those cars. No, often, no. Her, you know, so there's there's lights, there's the starting of the car, and very often there was talking. Now, um, why I asked the question about where are people permitted to park, um, th I, and I, I uh, feel as if I've been a bit of a stalker over the last couple of days, only from comments people have made. Thursday, there were 12 cars parked on the grass, well, 11 on the grass, and there was one on the wider part of the tarmac. So I've taken some photographs, albeit they were through Mrs Lane's um, fence and a blue car and a white car had left, so I've only got 10 cars. Friday, I um, I did go over the park deliberately. Sorry to interrupt, Ms Coglin. What is your question to Mr Willing? Well, I think in terms of what A, um, are you permitted to park outside um, on the green, um, which backs onto the AstroTurf? Which is a play area. Which is a play area. And if people are permitted to park there, you know, there have been times there's been large numbers of vehicles. And if those people are there at night, that just adds to the, the noise when people leave in terms of cars, uh, lights of the cars and you know people people do talk so um, is it the question was, regarding parking on the green that's the question yes so um, and, and that would have yeah and, and the noise and that would be that would extend and if the license went up until um 11 30 then by the time people because I just want to remind you, you're going to have your opportunity to put all of your representations to the okay. subcommittee and all of that, that information you may wish to bring up in due course. But at the moment, we're just focusing on okay. questions for, for Mr. Willing. OK, uh, so one question then. Why 11.30 and not keep it at 11? Um, <clears throat> Chairman, uh, through you again. Um, it was primarily uh, to deal with those few occasions when we may, when a member or the club as a whole may wish to have some uh, form of uh, celebratory type evening uh, along the lines that I've already said. If if you were celebrating your 80th birthday, it's, it's, it's a, a milestone that most of us hope to get to. And... Um, if you've got family there that have come, possibly travelled uh, some distance, you want to make a night of it, and and it was to cover those those times. To give you an example, there were after on Saturday because I also uh, went outside a couple of times on Saturday, uh, obviously in readiness to uh, for this meeting and checked on the number of cars. There were uh, 10 cars parked out there on Saturday. They were um, on the grass, uh, backed, backed or driven in off the tarmac lane that comes down to the back of the pavilion. Uh, not on the AstroTurf. There's never been cars parked on the AstroTurf. Um, by Appa 7, there was only two cars there. I personally left, the wife and I personally left there at quarter past nine. Um, and when I left, there was one car left there. Uh, it's a, a social member, uh, lives by himself, 80 plus years of age, drives down from Cross Keys. He has a chat with a couple of the members in the club. There were only 11 members left in the club when I left at quarter past nine. Okay. He has a chat with the members in the club. He has one solitary drink, never ever more than one, and leaves about an hour later. He would have been gone by about, um, I, I would guess, no later than half past ten. And that is um, the norm. That is the norm. Um, I think it, it hasn't been pointed out, but of course, um, the officers have said that uh, parking isn't a matter for consideration by the licence, but um, I, I, I'm happy to deal with it. We have had problems, uh, residents in the other part of Springfield Road have complained about people parking out there. So for our own members, we do uh, try and get our own members not to park out on the road, although they got the, the legitimate right to park on the road, 
we we do try and get uh, our members to to park at the rear of the pavilion because then that saves um, problems with other residents of a, a, of the other part of Springfield Road. I I can quote an example. I myself the. Um, in November 2018, um, the wife and I had been out for a meal. It was a Saturday evening. I said, oh, should we pop in the club? Uh, which we did. I had two two drinks. The wife doesn't drink, so she was driving. We left the club at quarter to 11, and I found two tyres. A knife had been put into two of my tyres. Um, I eventually, we eventually got home at half past one, uh, having got a low loader out to take the car home. Um, another car of our members had a scratch down the side. So for our own members, we do um, ask if they can to save problems out in that area of Springfield Road to park at the rear of the pavilion. Some of the opposition teams that visit us have now learned how to, um, the access, uh, they've learned where the access road is into the rear of the pavilion and they park there, which is why there were 10 cars parked there on Saturday afternoon when we had Killian playing home. Um, but, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you, you win with some and you can't win with others. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Willen, but as you said, Parking isn't a consideration for this committee anyway. No. So I'll go, thank you. I'll just go to Mr. Morgan. I will use next with his hand up. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just, just to come back on, on a point that uh, uh, for the question that Councillor Cushing started with, and I just, uh, and helpfully, um, uh, Mrs. Coughlin has, has helped with this as well. The, 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 um, in the, answer, in the question about nothing's going to change, things will change. Um, that was the question that comes to the question. There's an extra half an hour, certainly, that uh, has been applied for, has been identified by um, uh, the residents. Uh, that, so there is a ch fundamental change to what is currently permitted and what could be held if, obviously, members determined this application uh, as per the application uh, that's been applied for. So it's just to cover that point off. I think I think members have got that now anyway from uh, what um, Mrs. Coughlin has said. So uh, just to, to, to highlight that, highlight that to members. And just just one final point, if I may. Just I've just just noticed um, looking at the report in um, paragraph one point three four uh, in relation to the supply of alcohol uh, Monday to Sunday, eleven to eleven thirty. Actually, the Sunday provision would cease at, at, at 2300 and not 1130. So um, um, for, just for the legal advisor, that is an error of mine. Um, so I'm sure you, you will take that into your considerations um, when it's for the determination later. But what has been applied for, uh, for for Sundays was 2300 and not 2330. So that is my error in, um, in preparation of the report. OK, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Uh, Councillor Cushing, please. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, can I just have clarification? I don't know whether or not this be Mr. Rawson or Mr. Morgan uh, who would need to answer this question. If uh, this um, license um, application is not agreed, does that mean that they will be reverted back to the original license where he can't, uh, where drinks cannot be taken? Well, alcoholic drinks, I apologise, cannot be taken outside the pavilion. So will it revert back to the original? That That's correct. Unless it's covered by a temporary event notice or something of that sort. Uh, yeah, that would be the position. And how many temporary um, events notices are the club entitled to at, the pres at this present moment? Um, at the currently, uh, it would be 15 notices which could last up to 21 days. Uh, there is talk of that uh, provision being increased, however, so uh, but currently is 15 uh, for a maximum of 21 days. Okay, thanks very much for that. Thank you very much. Uh, there's no more hands up now, so thank you, Mr. Willing. Just, just a quick one there, Chair, before when you say uh, 15, but it, it may be increased, is that our doing or is it a, a legal obligation? It would be a um, a government um, requirement 
uh, again, I think it's a consideration. It may be a, it may be a temporary measure uh, in relation to uh, assisting hospitality premises, uh, but it, it's not uh, it's not in yet. It's, it's likely to be September onwards that that, that is being possibly considered. Thank you, Chair. Sorry. Thank you, uh, Mr. Willing. Yeah, yes. there, there was one point that I missed. Um, Mrs. Cotlin did say that she's got no objection to um, the fact that w we we have allowed in the past uh, drinking around the the outside of the pavilion around the bowling green, and um, she has no objection to that. And um, that is the main purpose of this application. I must be truthful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Willing. The no more hands, so we'll go now uh, to the representation bodies. Uh, I'll go to uh, PC Dan Allen, please, from the Gwent, please. Good morning, Chair. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of my colleague, PC Williams, who uh, was away at the moment. She's the officer originally uh, responding to the application. Um, you know, to your comments, um, the comments by Gwen Police on pages 25 and 26 of your information pack represent no objections and Gwen Police are satisfied that the conditions that have been agreed by the applicant. Therefore, um, we've got no further comments. Thank you, uh, PC Dan Allen. Um, are there any questions, please, for Gwen, please? No questions? Yeah, sorry, Chair, I do apologise. I have a question. Um, uh, sorry, the my um, mouse wasn't working tidy. Um, yeah, just uh, one question from the police. Um, isn't, isn't there within your recommendations that all outside um, a drinking sort of stops at 10 o'clock, though? Am I correct in that then, um, PC Allen? Yeah. Yes, sir, that's correct. OK, thanks very much. And that's been agreed by the applicant as well. Right, lovely. Thank you. OK. Uh, Mr. Rawson, please, did you have your hand up? Um, thanks, Chair. Um, PC Allen, uh, do you know off the top of your head or are you aware of any uh, instances where the police have had to attend the club premises uh, as a result of any social behaviour or any disorderly conduct? As it's good practice. We look at um, all applications that come in and we look at that for every application. And this hasn't been noted by my colleague and I've looked at it as well. And I can't see any. Thank you, uh, PC Allen. Thank okay. you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, PC Allen. Any more questions? Oh, uh, the residents got the hand up. Mr. Goff, Gofflin, please. Sure, well, I'm almost beginning to feel uh, awkward asking questions now. <laughs> I just I, I refer to quite a lot of your appendices and in terms of um, I'm not quite sure whether this would have been something maybe the police would have taken into account and I know parking isn't an issue but I will bring a point up about it certainly from what's embedded but page 20 makes um, page 28.42 make reference that uh, about taking into account where children congregate, and again, there are cars parked directly behind the AstroTurf area. Um, would that have been something maybe the police would have taken into account in this instance, if you were aware that vehicles were parked there or not? I'm just thinking about, could that potentially cause some conflict? That That's all. And I know it's not in the Bowling Green, it's outside the Bowling Green. But within here, you there is sort of reference within all these documents about take, um, the importance to recognise the impacts of licence activity not contained in the building. And maybe I'm misinterpreting some of these things, but it's the, the the words. So I guess that was my question. Is there that, that sort of potential conflict, something that should have been taken into account? Of one of the yeah, we, we take into account a number of different things and, and the makeup of the area and the environment would have been would have been one of those as well. Um, yeah, so that would have been taken into consideration. OK, thank you. And I, I just say this because some of those children, um, I mean, I, I have no problems with, with the children. Um, they, they do play rather um, enthusiastically with their footballs. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we have had broken windows in certain parts, uh, greenhouses in the garden. Certainly that's been something of Wendy Waits. And I was just thinking, you know, the enthusiasm with which they play potentially could damage uh, a vehicle. Maybe Mr. Willie, with Mr. Yeah, Willing. <clears throat> Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Gothin, but uh, I don't think that's part of the license application. Thanks very much. Um, I'll go now to Annette Dix to make a representation, please. Yes, good morning, Shane. Good morning to everybody. Um, okay. My uh, uh, representations are referred to in Appendix 7 of the report, pages 29 and 30. When considering the representations that I've made, um, I've taken into account the nature of the application, which as you will be aware from um, Mr. Morgan, it's a variation of an existing club premises certificate, which re restricts the use of the club to members and guests only. It's not a, a premises license where um, just normal members of the public can just turn up and uh, be served uh, alcohol. Um, I've also visited the premises and I was going to describe the um, the area in which uh, the pavilion is situated, which Mr. Willen has uh, kindly given um, some uh, information to the committee. But when uh, visited with environmental health, uh, it was noted that it is a small pavilion, but it is backing on in very close proximity to um, residential properties and their back gardens. Um, based upon the, its location, um, therefore the uh, Licensing Authority acting in this role as a responsible authority has recommended that the outside area be restricted to 2200. Um, based upon the pavilion itself inside, it is a small pavilion, um, but previously the club didn't benefit from recorded music or live music other than for uh, live music exemptions. And for that reason, um, the licensing authority did not support the live music until 2300, Monday to Saturday. Um, and obviously, I understand that the applicant has agreed to um, amend in his application back to 2300. Uh, taking into consideration the non standard timings for New Year's Eve, which the club currently benefits from the Millennium Order, which permitted the supply of alcohol from 11 o'clock in the morning till 11 on New Year's Eve to 11 p.m. on New Year's Day. And I note that the, obviously they're asking now for the supply of alcohol to be restricted till 2 a.m. The Licensing Authority doesn't wish to make any objections to that part, but did um, refer to the recorded music and live music um, that they applied for till 1.30 would recommend that it be restricted to 12.30 on New Year's Eve. Having regard, as I said, to its location and the conditions um, offered by the applicant, um, as well as those by the other, rep other responsible authorities, the Licensing Authority have suggested certain conditions which are referred to in my report. Um, if there's anything else, Chair, other than that, that's the end of uh, my representation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Dix. Are there any questions for Ms. Dix, please? The Licensing Authority? Uh, Mr. Rosen, please. Um, thanks, Chair. Um, we've heard earlier in the hearing, uh, Mr. Morgan didn't have any specific knowledge uh, or any awareness that there'd been uh, any resident complaints in relation to the operation of the premises under its licensing regime in years previous. Um, what's the state of your knowledge in, in, that, in that effect? Or to that that would be the same as uh, Mr Morgan. I have no record of any complaints uh, to this uh, premises previously. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Cushion, please. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I note in your report, um, Mrs. Dix, um, regarding the audience does not exceed 500. Now, I assume that would be under the new license, uh, um, if the new license is agreed, which would include the bowling green and the pavilion itself. But under fire regulations, what's the maximum number allowed within the pavilion itself? 
That would depend on the club's risk assessment, um, councillor. It's not something that the local authority would um, suggest a condition and, and make that determination. It would be part of the risk assessment. Um, obviously, they would um, benefit um, the currently do from the live music exemption, um, which is not a licensable activity. If the um, bowling green was permitted today to be outside, they could still they could also have recorded music as part of the exemption up until eleven o'clock. So sorry, uh, can I just clarify that? So they could have the music outside as well then till eleven o'clock, not just uh, be restricted to music inside the pavilion. That's correct. They could they could have that now under the live music exemptions. Um, All right. They could okay. have that now. Recorded music isn't permitted at the moment because it's um, it refers to on premises for the supply on. So the Bowling Green hasn't got an on uh, premises license at the moment. And this is where part of the uh, nature of the variation is to include the Bowling Green um, as part of their club premises certificate. So under the exemptions, they would still be allowed to have live music. They would uh, be able to have live music even without the new, uh, if the current application was refused, they would still be able to have live music outside anyway. That's correct. We revert back to that license. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, no more questions there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dick. I'll go to Abby Brown, please. For the environment mental health. Uh, good morning, everyone. In relation to um, pollution control, uh, we attended the premises with the licensing authority to chat to representatives of the club. And following the outcome of the conversations we had that day, we believe that the recommended conditions as agreed with the applicant will make sure that there'd be no adverse impacts to residents in the vicinity, providing this license is granted essentially. Thank you very much. Any questions, please? Uh, residents, Ms. Vivian Goffin, please. Question from Mr. Leonard. Hello. Okay, Mr. Leonard. Right, first of all, you just asked us, uh, I'm sure there was Annette that mentioned something about a risk assessment. Will a risk assessment be done on my daughter, who is nine years old and cannot speak up for herself and be an autistic, who basically resides right next to the bowling green? Excuse me, Mr. Leonard, are you yeah. asking Mr. Brown? I, to, to be to be honest with you, I don't know who I'm asking. Because <laughs> Sorry. Mrs. Yeah, Dick. But... The environmental health, is it? Just mentioned, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, Mr. Leonard, Mr. Leonard, I, I, I don't think any of the responsible authorities um, that take part today have a responsibility to risk assess your daughter. Um, from a legal perspective, I don't think okay, there so is. Will my daughter's um, autism come into this? We, 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 when, when it's, when it's your turn to make your representations to the subcommittee, right, okay, I, so I, I hope then that yeah. you will give yes. us as much information as you possibly can about your daughter. But is there a question at the moment for Abby Brown? No, you're okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mr. Rawson, did you have a question? Uh, yes, uh, perhaps a predictable one, but um, Abby Brown, uh, do you have any awareness or knowledge of any noise nuisance complaints being made in relation to the operation of the premises over the last several years? Uh, at this point in time, there has been no service request in relation to um, environmental health matters relating to Pontemister Bowls Club. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Cushing, please. Yeah, thanks, Ms Brown, uh, for your report. Just a, a, some point of clarification. Is yeah. there a... Um, when live mu when and if live music is actually played or recorded music is played, um, is there a restriction on how loud it can actually be? Decibel usage? The short answer is no. However, if a service request was to be received by the department, we would undertake investigatory proceedings and part of that would be 
the collection of data to record any issues that were alleged by the club and also a subjective assessment made by an environmental health professional um, under the Environmental Protection Act 1990 so that right. so we wouldn't stipulate any decibel um, levels. Right, so under um, what Mr Willing is actually proposing that the, these sort of uh, celebration evenings will actually be ad hoc um, then if, say, for instance, then the residents have an issue with um, loud music and it's disturbing them late into the night, would, they, um, would the council then have the right to put monitoring devices within the um, area to monitor decibel usage? So initially, what we would do if we received a service request would be to investigate the enjoyment of said person's property so we would undertake the assessment from the person's property in instances where there may be an event which would be a, a medium to large scale event we do ask for sort of prior knowledge of it and we may assist on maybe looking at guidance as to whether the event itself may may cause issues and at that point decibel levels may be deemed appropriate at um, associated boundaries but we are talking about events such as music events which may run from sort of one day to two days not uh, a person's um, individual celebration so we would look at matters differently depending on what the complaint was and what the allegations were at the time. OK, it's just that uh, I know noise pollution um, is quite um, disturbing to some people and some uh, residents and constituents throughout Caerphilly. So I'm just trying to emphasise a point regarding the uh, music, whether it be live or recorded. Thanks very much then. OK. Thank you. Um, Mr Willing, please. Yeah, may I comment on um, what has just been discussed, Chairman? Uh, in respect of the noise, and in answer to Councillor Cushing's uh, question, um, the playing of music is inside the pavilion. Never, ever has there been music played outside of the actual building itself. There's never been amplifiers or any uh, music of any sort played outside. There's the application also included a voluntary condition, which um, I put in, that if and when such uh, occasions happen, um, doors of the pavilion would be kept closed. So again, yep. that would help to mitigate the problem of noise. Yeah, I was only asking for clarification, Mr. Willing, because under the new, if you were granted this new new license, you would be eligible to have um, live events outside, not pre -re not recorded, but live events as clarified by I think it was uh, Mrs. Dix or Mrs. Brown. I can't remember which one actually um, uh, said it, but th that's why I wanted clarification on uh, possible noise pollution. Thank you very much, Mr. Willing. Thank you, Ms. Cushing. Uh and thank you, Ms. Brown. No more questions. Now we'll go to the residents, please, for the representation. We'll go to uh, Mr. Coughlin first, please. Your representative. Okay. Um, hi. You will notice from um, my letter, mine was probably more about um, process. And I didn't quite understand the, um, um, the the variations because they didn't contain enough information. But the information we've received um, has clarified around some of those. Um, I do don't have any objections, as I've said, about uh, consuming the alcohol outside of the um, the internal premises at all. Um, and just thankful, thank thank you that. Um, that's for 10 o'clock. Um, however, um, as an observation, and we're still in got issues around coronavirus, um, I've, I've noticed that the closing of windows and doors for music 
um, cognizance will have to be taken around um, the, the requirements for fresh air. So, and I guess that would be part of your um, risk assessment, uh, Mr. Willings, uh, around that. Um, my main concern remains, I have no, um, uh, I've never had any complaints about the Bowling Green and its current um, licensing. Um, and, you know, the times you have had music there, I've quite enjoyed some of it in my back garden, but I, I'm not quite sure I've ever heard um, live music there. Um, if I have, it probably wasn't too bad. But again, my concern would be if it, it uh, if the thing, if it was extended until um, 12, 11, 11.30, and then I note you're looking at people being off the premises, that would take it up to midnight. Bearing in mind, I know you've said this has got nothing to do with parking. However, um, I, I have taken, I've read all these documents about um it talks about uh taking account appendix 4 11.4 the importance to res recognize the impacts of the licensing license activity not contained in the building and there's reference to the wider impact of people as they as as they leave premises there's also um there's also information in there about taking account of how people get to and from the premises. That is my whole point about the parking situation at the back of our houses. And I really, really understand you seem to be between a rock and a hard place um, with the parking situation. I have thought about that, but there is a car park at, at the further end of the field that I understand will have an impact on the Ice of Road residents. Uh, and I understand from the councillors they have made their concerns. So look, I, I really understand you between a rock and a hard place, and I guess there does need to be some um, um, some some compromise some compromise somewhere. Um, th those are really my uh, my thing my my points um, e existing um, up until eleven um, for alcohol and your and your music. Chair, you're on mute. Again, sorry, apologies for that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gothlin. Can we go now, to, please, to Mrs. Lane, if she's still there? Yes, I'm still here. My concerns are with the music and the drinking. I have a son that has mental health problems. He goes to a, a special clinic once a month for special tablets. He has a support worker that he goes out with every week. His condition is schizophrenia. And as you probably know, he can hear voices and what have you. My concerns are that this is going to enhance the way he is. And at the moment, we, we, are, we are fine, but I don't want it to get any worse than, than that. You know, my concerns are for him. You like stability. And, he'll, and I've got to have stability for him. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Coffin and Mr. Lane, please? No, no questions. Thank you. So now I'll go to Mr. Leonard, please. Hi. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Mr. Leonard. Okay. Could I just ask Mr. Rawson, the Zan came up. Sorry, Chair, I was having trouble raising the hand. Um, just one question for Ms. Coughlin. Um, how did you become aware that the variation application had been made? Um, my neighbour, Wendy Waits, told me over the fence, and that's why my, my uh, letter went in quite late. Um, I think I was aware of it six days before, yeah, um, it was yeah six days before the, the closing date, and uh, a, a local resident from over the area posted a picture of it on the risk of Ponty Mr. social media page. On uh, a photograph of the notice, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. And yes. just a question for Mrs. Lane um, in relation to your son and his schizophrenia. Um, what what have you observed the effect on his illness to be in the way that the club has been operating over the last few years? Well. Lee takes tablets at 10 o'clock in the night. It must be 10 o'clock. And 
he had once he takes these tablets, he sleeps. But if anything disturbs him, then we are up all night then trying to reassure him that it's not the voices, that it's music and you know, it is hard sometimes and um that's my main concern is is my son. Has the medication at ten o'clock at night has that been in place for a few years? It's been in pl uh, place for about twenty years. Yeah, twenty years. About twenty wow. years. Um, and and sort of over that period, how many instances have you had where he has been woken in the night after taking his medication, and you've had an awful night trying to reassure him as to what's happening? How many times has that occurred? Uh, over the last few years um quite how regular is it actually but not just with the bowls club it's other music as well because at certain times of the night no matter where you are you can hear music from around everywhere from the neighborhood so to speak yeah and then we are up all night and my neighbor as well mrs cochlin she's helped yeah. out a few times because we have had to sort of control him you know yeah and try to explain to him that it's not the voices, it's, it's music. Or, you. you know. Um, can you remember any incidences where it has been as a result of noise from the premises, the bowls premises? Um, a few times he's, he's woke up because he sleeps in the back where, where the, the bowls is. And he's called me and said, Mum, Mum, I can hear the voices. And I, I've literally gone into bed with him to calm him down. That's the only way I can do it. I it's see. The music and the voices and, you know, it's just the way he is. He can't, he, there's no way we can control that. Okay. And when it has happened, is it been, as best you can recall, noise from within the premises or outside the premises, say, associated with the bowling green? It's more, it's both, really. Right. Um, you know, if... Um, and especially with the cars starting up and then people talking and, you know, it's it all goes, his mind isn't like ours then, put it that way. You know, he sees things different. Yeah. I see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cushion, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I did, Chair. It was basically along the same lines as Mr. Rawson's uh, question uh, regarding uh, Mrs. Lane's son um, and how many incidents uh, as a result of the bowling club or activities in and surrounding the bowling club had disturbed Mrs. Lane's son uh, during the night. So, and but Mr. Rawson's actually clarified that anyway. So, thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. There's no more questions. So, we'll go to Mr. Leonard now, please. Hi. First of all, I'd like to say that I have no objection whatsoever to the alcohol in or around the ground. That is fine. My problem is the live entertainment. As you say, there is no limit on the decimal of the sound of it. But obviously, my main concern is my little girl, as you're all aware. All right. She's nine years old. She's autistic. She was diagnosed at four years old. She has sensitive hearing. She has got a wear earmuffs where we go to laid places. You'll see by the pictures, her, we, we're the newest members of this street. We moved in here a couple of years ago, purely for the space of the garden. When you see a bowling green, you think, lovely, quiet, that's brilliant, that's what we need. My daughter's escape is outside. Um, the equipment she's swinging on was a grant from the family fund who, who applies a grant to help her with her needs. So as you can see, that's helping her with her needs. Yes, any loud noise will, will happen. It, it, it will really have an impact on her more ways than you could ever imagine. So, you know, even me and my wife are trying to understand autism after nine years. We don't know how to conquer it ourselves now. She was signed off from the paediatrician when she was six, and it's left to me and my wife to, to deal with it. All the hard work that I feel we've put in is going to go out the window once her little escape garden has been taken away from her with loud noise and music. You know, I have no problem with the alcohol. My main concern is the noise. You know, 
He said, yeah, it's going to be taken inside. I'm sorry, your building is not soundproofed. You know, that is just a thin wall. They're, it's just, they just works the same as a window. So, and, you, and my, my house is the closest. Yes, my house is the closest to all these residents to your building. I've shown the pictures. You can see how close it is to where my daughter has her little escape. She will flap her arms. She will walk on tiptoes. She has a serious issue with autism. And this needs to be taken into consideration. Serious consideration. You either help her by not granting this, or you've got the possibility of causing future problems with the music, with the loud noise. The sleeping pattern is she will sleep when she wants to sleep. There is no pattern in place. You know, I'm quite happy to get, unless anybody got any information on understanding autism, then I'm quite happy to listen to it. Otherwise, obviously, I can get paediatricians letters, I can do whatever. I can show you all the write-ups of letters that I've had in the past, how this impacts my little girl. Mr. Willing, I'm not trying to take your livelihood away from you, but I got to look at my daughter. This is the reason I bought this house. You know, I'm not trying to take nothing away from you. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Have you finished? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Councillor Cushing, please. Uh, questions? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, it's my understanding, it's, it's basically clarification to what Mr. Leonard has just been saying, that live music isn't something which has uh, which is stopped anyway in in that um, premises because even under the current law, perhaps uh, Lee can actually answer this. Even under the current license, he can have exempt um, live uh, meetings, uh, live events, can't he, um, Lee? Am I right in that? So basically, even under the current license, you can still have events where live music um, happens, which will yes. remain in place if, he, if he's not granted this additional license. Am I right in saying that? Yes, Councillor, you are right. Um, there are protections afforded uh, to local residents. They would not necessarily be under the Licensing Act. They would be under the Environmental Protection Act in terms of what um, uh, Ms Brown mentioned earlier on. There are There is a protection afforded. Um, the current permissions would allow uh, the, the bowls club to have uh, live and recorded music up until from eight o'clock in the morning to eleven o'clock at, at night now, uh, with, without this variation. And if this variation was um, approved or, or, or not approved, that provision would still remain. I think, from what uh, you know, Mr. Leonard's and the resident concerns, I, I certainly get those uh, in relation to why they would be concerned. Um, the I think to date the the the, the problem being that uh, if it has caused them a nuisance, they've certainly not communicated that fact at the moment to the relevant responsible authorities uh, about the fact that how how that may be impacting upon them in terms of so if uh, music noise from an event at th this venue uh, had been interrupting them or causing them a nuisance, then to date uh, it doesn't appear that that has been um, communicated. Uh, I think uh, some of the residents have actually indicated uh, that to be the case that they've not complained uh, to date. But I think you know it's it's about it's a um, a, a balancing exercise. Uh, I think uh, for the the applicant, um, you know, at the, more, the main the main provision from what he appears to be su suggesting is um, it's going to be infrequent. At the moment, we we have not had anything from. Um, uh, from local residents to suggest that um, what has been held there has caused them a nuisance. So going forward, that is something that clearly they're going to have to um, to, to communicate if if things do, are an issue. Ask you um, so so yeah. So what you, you you're correct in so the, the question being yet yeah, you are correct. Uh, can I just ask a question of Mr. Leonard? Mr. Leonard, as like Mrs. Lane has um, said in her um, statement, okay. um, has there been any instances where um, noise levels or anything like that has caused your daughter undue um, harm? Yeah, every night. 
It doesn't matter what it is. Every night we have trouble with that. It so it's not necessarily it, from it, it what's could, happening in the balls club, is it? It doesn't matter. It could be anywhere. It could be a car going past the front. It could be. It's been closed. Yeah. Plus the balls club's been closed a year and a half. So. <laughs> and how long have you lived there? If you don't mind uh, me asking. Uh, four years now. Um, right. So prior to uh, the COVID, then did it actually cause um, any sort of uh, thing from the balls club cause um, your daughter any issues? Not to my knowledge, but any noise whatsoever from the front, from the back, she will only tell me something's woke her up. Right, you know? so it basically um, it could be any noise uh, from residents or visitors, oh, yeah. not necessarily from the Bulls Club. That's all yeah. I want the clarification on. Once, once they've got this license, I'm, I'm basically knackered with my daughter. If they start being loud and rowdy, I, 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 I'll be back to square one with her. <laughs> Yeah, but from what, what I, get, I gather Mr. Willing has actually said, is uh, basically the only reason he's applied for this licence is because inadvertently there was alcohol being taken off the prem, off the out of the pavilion to the bowling green. Yeah, and they have right. had events there in the past. He said in January uh, 2020, there yeah. was um, his uh, co one of his... Uh, colleagues um 80th birthday party yeah. um so there was uh there has been um music played at the uh, pavilion so just a uh, clarification if any of those events prior to covid had actually caused your daughter um any issues that's all well, i, I was clarif uh, clarifying what the date was of the 80th birthday party sorry can i ask what the date was of the 80th birthday party I don't know, you said January 2020, was it? That is that right, Mr. Willing? That's correct, uh, Chairman. Uh, it was mid-January. I did check on his date of birth. He was, um, I believe his birthday was the 16th. It would have been around about the Friday, around about the 16th of January. Well, I can, I'll tell you now that, obviously I was just making sure I wasn't away on holiday or anything like that. I was home at that time. I have no recollection. Uh, I have no memory of that. Yeah, you don't remember. So it could be, but the thing is, I just clarifying that it's not just the noise maybe from the pavilion uh, that, that might cause you to. No, no, that. no, it's not just the noise from the yeah. pavilion. It's noise from the front of the house. It's noise from my next door neighbours moving furniture. It's noise from the dog barking in the garden. Yes, yeah, so it could be any noise that upsets your daughter. That That's, I, yeah. I want you to find out. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Leonard. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Rawson, please. Yeah. Um, thanks, Chair. It's just a, a question for Mr. Leonard. Um, it may be helpful if we can explore the information to the panel in relation to your daughter's use of the garden and the swings, her, her, her safe space. Um, so I guess it, maybe if I can just lead in with a few questions and if that triggers you wanting to f give more meat on the bone, so to speak, then, then just take over. Um, is it a daily occurrence that she'll resort to this safe, safe space? It's... And she uses it as a stress reaction. If she's if she's her, her symptoms are stressed, she will then resort out there to try and calm or self calm. Yes. A lot of things trigger meltdowns. Um, we can pinpoint them, but we can now pick up when they're about to start. Yep. Um, it can go from disappointment, something startling her, something just coming on the telly, just to scare her. It could yeah. be anything. Her place of safety is the garden. That so is. Her. Will she go out to the garden, or will you sort of encourage that when no, you see the signs? No, no, she just goes. She just goes. Yeah, we got no, we got no say in that whatsoever. She just. She don't even tell us. Obviously, we follow just to make sure she's safe. Yeah. 
that she will go and sit on her swings, flap her arms, kick her legs and just rock or spin. And I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm presuming that the amount of time she'll spend out at any given time will be unpredictable as well. Oh, just a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She'll go out dead in all weathers. Okay. Um, has this been a consistent, the safe space being consistent over the last four years since you've moved to the property? Or is it a late development or is it something that's fairly consistent? In our old house, um, we had a tiered garden. We didn't have the space for things yeah. that we required. So myself and my wife, we made the decision to sell up and buy a bigger garden, basically. We weren't even looking at the house. Yeah. We, we this come onto the market, we come down and see this. First thing I just looked at was the garden. That was it. It was the space we needed. Okay. Uh, cost us a little bit more than we anticipated, but it was for my daughter. And that's the main thing I needed. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we've heard evidence from Mr. Willing about the bowl season running through the warmer months and there seems to be league games on a on a Wednesday and a Saturday, albeit there wouldn't have been over the last uh, 12 months, 12 to 18 months because of COVID. Yes. Um, can you explain to the panel the, the the link between any of the bowls activities in terms of on the green and your daughter um, being triggered into a meltdown or into a pre-meltdown? Sorry, can you just repeat that? So it's a really long-winded question. What I'm That's interested in is, is does, does the noise, just the general noise from people playing bowls in normal league matches, what effect does that have on your daughter? To be, to be fair, when they're just playing matches, I don't hear no noise. <laughs> when they've got a match on... Cause what like, about your daughter? Does she hear the noise? She doesn't say anything if she does, because I know at the bowls matches, they are very quiet. You know, otherwise they tear your eyes out, to be fair, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I get what you know, mean. Like, like I said earlier, when I went over there for the pint, when my in-laws were members over there, yeah. me and my wife wanted to like to talk. We'd get dirty looks. That was how serious. These, you know, like he said to me, I look at age to try and do it. To be fair, it is something that I am looking at when I retire. Yeah, you know, yeah. To me... My wife's mum and dad have got much more of a social life than that I have at the moment. And yes. it's something like I want to join. Yeah. You know, they, they've got yeah. so much of a social life, it's unreal. But um, it, is respect, it is a respectable sport and I, re, I respect them. Yeah, fantastic. Mr. Leonard, that's all the questions I had. If you think of anything else, please share with the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. No more questions for Mr. Leonard. Uh, Mrs. Waite, please. Uh, or Mr. Morgan. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just need to check. I know that uh, I think Miss Waite. I'm not sure if she's still with us or whether she's left, and her comments are going to be relayed by uh, Mrs. Coughlin. Yeah. Okay. That's what Wendy's asked. She's had. She's got uh, a meeting in work. I'm just. Um, I'll share Mrs. Waite's letter, and uh, these really are the. Uh, conversations she's had with myself and I'm sure Ms. Mr Leonard and Mrs Lane. Um, her first concern was why she wasn't made aware of this in writing. Um, again, um, and she's as far as she's aware, none of our neighbours have been made aware. And I know uh, we have asked a few neighbours and they, they weren't aware of it. Um, and she said um, she, she was made aware from a, um, a social website um, she's in opposition to the decision. Um, she's got a, a young granddaughter, five, who lives, uh, who lives with her. So she's very concerned that um, any additional uh, music or um, the, the cars, because I know she's got a concern, the cars at the back of the house, people leaving, uh, would disturb her, her granddaughter's um, sleep pattern, uh, particularly on school nights. Um, and she's also made um, some comments as well. It's not just about the bowls club. The, this park is a huge uh, facility for lots of other activities. And I think as neighbours, we love to see people there, but things can become quite um, antisocial. Um, you know, it, it, it's just an added thing, screaming, shouting, foul language. So I think 
for, for, for when Mrs. Waits, it's about um, the bowls club is just another um, issue to have to contend with, with everything else that goes on in, in the park. Um, her Facebook was there. Yeah, she said she just uh, heard it on Facebook. Um, and she just mentioned again, it's been bad enough with the parking. Um, one or two cars were on the grass initially. And um, now she's she's uh, concerned that the car parks take uh, the cars um, are quite along the, the hedge of were along the hedge of the boundary walls. But now they're just sat off the grass just behind the AstroTurf um, where, where, the, where the children play. Um, and she just invited somebody to visit her property if um, anybody wanted to um, have any further information and put things into context. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cothin. Uh, the question is, uh, Councillor Cushion, please. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, this parking issue seems to be running uh, as a main theme um, regarding the residents' concerns. Now, I know under licensing, uh, it's not something we, we're we supposed to take into consideration, but um, is, is there any uh, recourse for the residents where they can say about the parking and who they could complain to? Because obviously, they shouldn't be parking on grass like that when there's a designated parking facility and area, as Mr Willing has alluded to. Um, so is there any recourse for the residents to complain to a, a particular body regarding this parking on the grass? Uh, wondering whether Mr Rawson or Mr Morgan can clarify that? Uh, well, from a Perhaps a legal perspective, it, you'd start with who owns the, the land. It's probably in council ownership, I'm not sure. Um, if it was and if the lane that uh, that services that area is a, a highway, then I would have thought it would be the highway section of the council that you'd start with. Right, so yep. we don't know uh, particularly who actually owns the land, but bearing in mind it's got this astroturf, um, I could imagine that it's probably um, a council um, property. So they would need to go to highways then to complain to them about the parking. I know it's nothing to do with this license um, as far as we're concerned, but I, I want to you know, clarify for them so who they can go and complain to regarding this parking issue all the time there. Yeah, and then if, if highways say it's not a matter under their remit, but there's... Um, any social behaviour issues or nuisance being caused, then it may lead to a wider um, complaint to say the Safer Caffili partnership with that's sort of ma managed by the local authority. Um, I know we've dealt with uh, parking issues before that don't really fall into uh, un uh, illegal parking, um, but there's other, other avenues that can be looked at, such as community protection warnings or community protection notices. There, sometimes there's... Um, things the constabulary can do rather than the local authority and sometimes it's vice versa so there's usually not just a one quick fix um but it's better. That, that's what i would suggest okay then thank you mr ross and i just that i know that we employ our own um parking wardens and um you know i'm just wondering whether or not there may be something that they could put warning signs on vehicles uh, to stop them from yeah, yeah, there there is um does I think within highways there's a designated team that deal with parking uh, throughout the borough. Um, it would really depend on uh, how the the car park's being designated. Um, some car parks aren't controlled uh, by warden or you know a pay and display system or anything like that. Um, so it may be that we find that their civil powers rest in the car parks that are set up with such regulation, i.e. pay and display, um, sort of some sort of restricted parking area. Yeah, before I, we can gather, they park, they're not parking in the designated area, they're parking on the grass. So uh, yeah, yeah, but it's with the grass, the area in which they're parking on on the grass may yeah. not be a car parking area that falls under the car parking team's jurisdiction. I guess that's the simple way of putting yeah. it. All right, lovely. Thank you. I just want the clarification for them to have reassurance where they might be able to go. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Coughlin, please. Uh, um, 
my neighbours and myself have just been talking. Mr Willings, does any members of the Bowles Club have a key to access the barrier from the Lower Springfield Road area into the park? Because that barrier is sometimes closed. We thought it was for maintenance only. Yeah, we thought we under, we thought it may have been for maintenance only. Chairman, um, you wish me to reply? Yes, please, if we could. Yeah. Um, yes, the, uh, the there is a key kept in the pavilion for the barrier. The barrier of late has been permanently left open. But we in the club also have in regard to um, some of the residents' concerns are taking steps to make sure the barrier is only open on match days, which will pr primarily be there's a, a Tuesday afternoon league, a Wednesday evening league and a Saturday league. There is the odd occasion, as again I pointed out in the statement that went to residents, that if we have to rearrange a match, sometimes those matches are rearranged on a Sunday. Um, and uh, as I've started to indicate, uh, we will in future um, make arrangements that the barrier is only open on those days. May I, um, Chairman, um, respond to some of the comments that have been made by residents? Can you can you come back when uh, when we ask you to sum up, please? Okay, thank you. Can we can move on then, okay? Okay, yes. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, no further questions, so we go now to Mr. Lee Morgan, please, for summing up. I will ask every attendee then to sum up after. Okay, well, thank you, Chair. Um, well, members and uh, all parties present would have heard, you know, much information uh, this morning. Uh, members, your uh, decision now will be to determine this application uh, in accordance with uh, that set out in 1.8 of the licensing assessment. Uh, there is obviously a, a, an officer recommendation set out at 110. However, you know, you may, have, you may have heard information during the hearing this morning, which will lead you to consider other options in relation to that uh, suggested at 1.10. Um, so unless I can help with anything else, uh, members, I will I will hand back and allow others to uh, provide their summaries to this morning. But thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr Morgan. Can we go now, please, to Mr PC Allen to sum up, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, Gwen, please, just to sum up, um, we have no objections to the application and we are satisfied with the, condition, with the conditions that have been agreed with the applicant and nothing further to add. Thank you very much. Uh, go to Mrs Dix, please. Thank you, Chair. There's nothing really more to report other than what uh, my representation, sorry, my representation suggests. As I said, it's um, my representations have taken into account the um, nature of the application, uh, its location, and the um, the area in which it's situated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mrs. Brown, please. Just to sum up, obviously, from the initial point of dealing with the application and to sort of further comments made today, I'd like to say that my representations, representations remain the same and feel that providing that the conditions are applied to any consent going forward, that it will prevent any public nuisance being um, presented then basically to the, the residential vicinity. Um, just to add that should there be any concerns or any further allegations or service requests to suggest that anything within the premises is problematic going forward, that there is provision to investigate such instances under the Environmental Protection Act 1990 and also should our evidence suggest that if future actions would satisfy any 
breaches of conditions that we are able to call for a review um, at that time, really. And that's all I wish to add. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, we'll go to Ms. Coughlin, please. The residents to sum up. OK. Um, my, my summing up would be that there is no extension until 11.30. Um, and I have no objections with the other um, with the other areas applied for um, with due diligence to the perimeters as outlined in one of the um, conditions that actually cars leaving at night don't interrupt us any more um, than you know it is possible, please. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Lane, please. Well, you've mentioned the environmental health aspect of things. What about the mental health to hmm. my son and Mr. Leonard's daughter? That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Um, go to Mr. Leonard, please. Sum up. Well, to be fair, I don't think you're taking my daughter's well-being into account. That's how it's sounding. It sounds like you're all dismissing that, and this will have a major impact on it. And I, I just think that's completely wrong of you all. Unless you all understood autism, I don't think you've got a right to choose what or what shouldn't happen with her. You know, the child protection officer ain't even on you to try and help me defend it, or no paediatrician. None of you are doctors. None of you have got to deal with this decision every day and watch your daughter deteriorate because of somebody wanting to make a quick buck. No offence. You know, my daughter's life is my life. And she is she is the one I got to protect. And I I made the decision to do for her what I had to do a couple of years ago. And now this could all be taken away from me because somebody wants some loud music. Go and have it in your own back garden. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Uh, Mr. Willing, please, would you sum up? Yeah, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, in the main, I think it's fair to say that the residents have indicated that they haven't had a problem with the Bulls Club in the past. And despite my best assurances, um, I'm not sure if they accept that the Bulls Club will continue exactly as it has done in the last X number of years. Um, Mr. Leonard just referred to the news, uh, the loud noise um, business. I've indicated on a number of occasions and in my statement that was only ever intended to be for special functions, which possibly may have happened two or three times a year. He did earlier in his representation indicate that, to the best of his knowledge, he hasn't um, had reason to um, complain or heard of any noise in the past. And that's exactly what's going to happen in the future. Nothing, nothing whatsoever is going to change. You didn't have a license before. I do apologise. Sorry, Mr. Leonard. Well, M Mr. Leonard, you've already been told that we were able, under the existing licence, to be able to play music until 11 o'clock. For extensions late at night when my, so my daughter should be sleeping. Sorry, Mr. Leonard. Mr. Leonard, can we let Mr. Willing finish his summing up, please? <laughs> Chairman, uh, Mr. Leonard is, is obviously uh, concerned about his daughter, as we all should be. But he's making a big issue of the noise element of it. Whereas he has no reason to have complained about any noise emanating from the bowling club or green area in the years that he has been living in that property. And nothing's going to change, Mr. Leonard. We are not suddenly, we are not opening. Um, first of all, the club doesn't open every day of the week. And we're certainly not going to open and have live music played there two or three times a week, as was questioned by one of the um, uh, residents. It's 
two or three times a year at the outside if and when someone has got something to celebrate. Um, as far as parking isn't an issue with the license, but as Mrs. Cotling said, we are caught between a rock and a hard place. Um, we are trying to do good by the one lot of residents and would appear to be causing some limited problem with another uh, lot of residents. We are able to drive down to the rear of the pavilion along the access road and there's a, a 15 foot strip of grass at the end of the uh, between the tarmac access lane and the um, astroturf area, which we either drive onto up or, or reverse onto. So that on, you, going you on know. to back in again, I think we got past that. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Willett. Mr. Leonard, can you? I, I, I can't. In, in, yeah. in, summary, in summary, Mr. Chairman, the responsible authorities have come up with certain conditions, uh, such as uh, that if on these very odd few occasions there's live music played, it has to stop at 11 o'clock. That's been agreed. Drinking outside of the pavilion, that doesn't happen anyway, after, uh, rarely happens after the match finishes, unless it's a very hot day and you want to cool off has been agreed by the applicant to finish at 10 o'clock. Um, we, I reiterate, I emphasize that the club doesn't intend to alter in any way, shape or fashion the way in which it has operated in the past. And I, I've tried my best to give that assurance to the residents in my statement. And I do so not uh, give that same assurance now live to those residents. I'd love, by the way, Mr. Leonard, if I may just digress for a second. Mr. Leonard, don't don't wait until you retire. Come around now because you are the age of the person that the bowls club wants to attract the play bowls. And you'll see for yourself how we operate and can have some say in which way we operate in the future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Willing. Uh, Mr. Morgan, please. Yeah, Chair. Thank you. But very briefly, I'm just conscious that some things may have been entered into the sort of uh, the comments bar, which you may not necessarily see. Albeit that that time may have passed now in terms of the, the reference to uh, summing up. So, um, I'll take advice from uh, the legal advisor really as to whether uh, I know there's a hand up as well, but. Obviously, this is a summary um, for comments, and once parties have summed up, then obviously normally it's, it's back to, to you. But um, there was some information flashing into the um, the comments bar. Um, so uh, let's get some advice from Mr. Rawson. Well, parties were advised at the outset of the procedure for the hearing. Each party has been allocated a period of time in which to make their representations in addition to their written representations that form part of the evidence pack. Uh, all parties were advised that the summing up wasn't a time to introduce new information by which the other parties wouldn't have the opportunity to answer. Um, so my advice would be very to be considered very carefully uh, allowing new information at this very late stage in the hearing, uh, given all parties knew what the procedure was and had ample opportunity to present their case. Um, I haven't been able to see the comments in the comment bar that you're referring to, Mr. Morgan. Uh, is there a way that I can, does that show conversation? Yeah. yeah. And they're in chronological order, are they? In time order. Um, time order, so yeah. I've uh, looked at the comments. Uh, Mr. Leonard, are the further comments you wish to make? Are they comments that you've already made? No, I just want to. I just want to say to Mr. Willing, you know, I appreciate your offer of me coming to join the club, which I will be looking at in ten years' time when I, you know, All right. that's that's great. That's great. I win the lottery. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Brilliant. 
All right. Well, I think that really resolves the issue in terms of any anything further. Thank you. Yep. Thank, thank you, Mr. Ross. And um, I'll, uh, I'm back to legal now to finish off the, the meeting. Thanks, uh, Chair. Uh, in a moment, the Chair will ask all parties to hang up uh, and the subcommittee will retire to discuss the application and the representations that they've heard today. I'll be there to offer legal advice and the committee clerk will also be present throughout. The decision of the subcommittee will then be circulated by the licensing department within five working days of the meeting. Uh, thank you, Chair. Back to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for attending and good day. Now, I ask you please to all leave by hanging, pressing the hang up button. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair.